Passing to the ushers at the end of the aisles. Good. Good. Do you think Vipassana is suitable for American culture? For every culture. A way of life. American culture also needs peace, harmony, happiness, a good life. It is suitable for all. That's why large number of American citizens are practicing Vipassana. A number of them have become teachers of Vipassana. They are spreading Vipassana for the good of others and for their, their own good. What is the difference between Dhamma and Dharma? Even Duryodhan knew Dharma? <laughs> no difference. These are only words of two different languages. In Sanskrit and even in today's Hindi, we say Dharma. But in the language Prakrit, Pali of those days, which was the lingua franca of India 25 centuries back, 26 centuries back, it was called Dhamma. The same meaning, it makes no difference. Dhamma means law of nature, the truth. Duryodhana knew what Dharma is, but he could not practice. And that is why he said, Jana mit Dharmam. Najame pravritti janami adharmam najame nivritti. I know very well what dharma is, but I have no inclination to accept it, to work on it. I know what adharma is, but I can't come out of it because he has not practiced vipassana. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have come out of it. Please give advice to Indian expatriates living in U.S. My advice, if those who are living here, coming from India, not only from India, from any other country, must be very thankful to this great country, so generous, they, were, they have given you shelter. They have given you refuge. People from different countries have come and settled down here. And they have given you all the opportunity to earn money. And you are earning money. Be always thankful to this country, to the people of the country. And you must be very careful. You should also be always loyal to this country. Whether you are a citizen of this country, or you get just a green card to stay here, always loyal to the country. Never perform any action which will harm or hurt the people of this country. This will be a big, unwholesome action. Try to help as much as you can. You earn money, nothing wrong in that. But earning money should also be used for the benefit of the people here, benefit of everybody. That attitude should always be there. Anybody who has come from India and settled down here, living comfortably, of course has got love for the mother country or the parents country or forefathers country, nothing wrong in that. But also understand that you are unauthorized ambassador of that country from where you have come. People of this country will look at you, how you are behaving, how you are living. If they find you, living a good life and always helping the people of the country, never do anything to harm the country, they'll be so happy with you and they'll be so happy with your motherland. I feel this is what every repatriate people who come and settle down here should do. Some meditation teachers teach weekend courses in breath awareness. Why don't you do this? I had been a businessman for half of my life. And I know in business, we always say customer is right. <laughs> because you want more and more customers to please them. 
our aim is to please the customer in dhamma not to please the customer to help the customer to come out of misery so i know what people say 10 days not possible 10 days not possible so i know some of my students who are taking one one course or two course and some others also they say why 10 days it is too much come come i will teach you in one day i will teach you in two days and just few hours in the morning few hours in the evening the same i will teach you this breath i will teach you sensations what breath and what sensation and of course people get little relief from their stress and strain good at the surface level but they can't reach the depth of the mind and they can't purify their mind vipassana does not allows this kind of pleasing the customers we have to help the customer to come out of their misery how does vipassana compare with the teaching of gita it is applied gita before coming in contact with vipassana i was born and brought up in a very staunch conservative hindu family and i was teaching gita i was giving discourses on gita sit pragya saka bhasha who is established in pragya and these are the qualities these are the qualities and many times coming back home i see i got no i don't have a trace of those qualities why i keep on talking like that everywhere every talk i say be be established in pragya be established in intuition be established in wisdom and come out of craving vita raga bhaya krodha come out of craving come out of aversion come out of of uh, by, uh, fear me are talking 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 when i went to the first course with very hesitation this is a buddhist path and if i become buddhist i might go to hell no no not for me not for me my teacher was very kind very compassionate he asked me you are leader of hindu community in this country tell me your hinduism has got anything against shila sadachar that means morality how can any religion be against morality sir my religion is not against morality but how can it be a moral life the same duryodhan question you don't have control over your mind so i will teach you how to control your mind we call it samadhi any objection what objection samadhi if somebody teaches me i have been reading in the hindu scriptures this uh, recluse this muni went to the forest and and practice samadhi we are householders if somebody teaches samadhi wonderful sir no objection by samadhi you have purity of mind concentration of mind only at the surface deep inside there are impurities all the time multiplying i will teach you panya which means pragya to go to the depth of the mind and purify any objection pragya what objection sir in gita i have been talking people pragya 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 but i never knew how to practice if you are teaching me nothing wrong i joined the course just to give a trial what this buddhist are teaching let me see a trial my teacher said we teach nothing but morality concentration of mind and purification of mind by wisdom nothing else and i found yes that's all they teach and as i proceeded day after day it came to my mind this is applied gita practical gita you only talk of gita we satisfy our intellect ah wonderful our religion has got such wonderful teaching we satisfy our emotion ah wonderful our religion has got such wonderful teaching here is the practice and this is the practice and that is why i was fascinated and from then onwards no looking back how can i succeed if i detach myself from my feelings practice and you will feel you will be more successful more successful when your attachment you are a miserable person your mind is so very much disturbed and any decision you make with a disturbed mind maybe sometimes good but most of the time wrong but your mind is tranquil pure any problem comes and you make a decision it will be a quick decision right decision good for you and good for others you will be keeping on su- successful in your life how does observing breath and body sensations 
eventually get the mind purified. This is what I explain now. Mind is defiled by these impurities of craving, aversion. All other defilements are product of craving and aversion, craving and aversion. And you are going to the depth where you feel sensations and yet you don't crave, yet you don't have aversion, you are equanimous. You are changing the habit pattern. So you are purifying the mind, taking it out of the old habit of craving, aversion and all other defilements. This is how you purify the mind. How you could use this technique to prevent terrorism in Kashmir, Middle East and the world. <laughs> this technique was used as a practical technique at the time of Buddha. Great terrorist, someone who had killed 999 human beings and was looking for the thousandth one, a mad fellow, such cruel terrorist. Now with explosion, a thousand person can be killed. Bad, we don't say it is good. But to kill each person with his sword, how cruel this person would have been. He came in contact with Buddha, he came in contact with this technique, and soon became a saintly person. Saintly person, totally purified and started teaching this, this technique throughout his life. There were so many others. We say, paid murderers, you pay some money to them and they will murder anybody. They want money. Such paid murderers, we are changed totally. So any terrorist who comes in contact with this technique will certainly get, certainly get purified and come out of it. A number of them in the prisons, we have found how they change after one, two or three courses itself. But then, before anybody comes for the course, those who are terrified by these terrors, this is another big misery. The terrorist wants us to become terrified, fear. And out of that fear we say, well, well, don't kill us. We will accept whatever you want. They are successful. It is for this purpose they are terrorizing. It is for this purpose they are killing. Terror must go away. Fear must go away. And this technique will make you fearless. And the terrorists will not be successful in their aim to terrorize the whole world and get their wishes fulfilled. I am a mouth breather. How will this affect the practice? <laughs> Try Try through the nostrils, if due to any disease you can't breathe through the nostrils, breathe through the mouth, nothing wrong. But keep trying. I have seen many cases, cases of sinus where they can't breathe properly. Within a few days, they start breathing without any difficulty. So come and give a trial. If you are not successful, keep on breathing with the, with the mouth, nothing wrong. <laughs> what will happen to all the Vipassana meditators when they die. <laughs> A Vipassana meditator understands every moment I am taking birth, I am dying. I am taking birth, I am dying. The entire structure, mind and matter, constantly arising, passing away, taking birth and dying, taking birth, and you are happy with that. You keep your community. So at the time of death also, you are smiling. Let death come. You welcome the death. And because you have changed the habit pattern of your mind, your life, life, you have promoted yourself to a better life, so after death there will be no, there will be only promotion, no demotion. <laughs> be careful. I often find that my motivation to act comes from my fear about unwanted things to keep them from happening. If I observe my fear, my motivation goes away. How do you explain I should act in such situation? The motivation is to become fearless. And this technique makes you fearless. Then all your other motivations will get fulfilled with a fear, fearful mind. How can you fulfill your motivations? You are a disturbed person. Your mind is disturbed. And you cannot be successful in your life with the disturbed mind. We are strongly cautioned against 
using energy healing techniques while practicing vipassana as a massage therapist what are the potential problems and what do i need to be careful about yes wherever there is a spiritual healing what you call spiritual healing we are not against it there are so many people who get healed by these spiritual healings like reiki and like so many else perfectly all right we are not against but when you mix up vipassana with it then the danger comes because vipassana wants you to observe your natural vibration whatever it is but if a outside vibration is input in your body by this kind of healings then many a times there's a confusion inside clash between natural sensations and artificial sensations and we have seen some people going out of balance two teachers of reiki went out of balance because they started mixing vipassana so we have to be very careful we are not here to harm anybody ordinary massage acupressure acup nothing wrong because no vibrations are involved wherever vibrations are involved in healing it should be kept away from vipassana i am a man in wait 20s is it more important to focus on achieving a job marriage or the experience of nibbana <laughs> what is nibbana bana means fire burning nibbana is extinguishing of fire that you keep on extinguishing now there is a fire of craving all the time fire of aversion all the time and you keep on working without this fire get rid of this fire which you always have within yourself and enjoy the life be successful in life are there any conditions like awakened kundalini or diseases where vipassana is not advisable vipassana can be practiced by all but when you come to vipassana without condemning you have to keep whatever you practice previously aloof don't mix it otherwise some trouble may arise anybody can practice there is no difficulty does vipassana believe in karma theory yes it is karma theory which makes one understand vipassana better and by vipassana the karma theory becomes better what is karma the mind starts working first and then only the vocal action or the physical action and when mind has started with the wrong karma by generating an impurity you see you are getting harm now so the seed that you are sowing is a seed of misery the fruit will be nothing but misery and with the pure mind the seed that you are sowing is the seed of happiness it will bring nothing but happiness so come out of the hell fire within yourself and enjoy the kingdom of heaven within yourself and the person will do that if there is no i who and what is striving for purity and liberation practice 10 days and it will become very clear to you <laughs> don't believe what i say or don't believe what buddha said or the scripture says your own experience will tell you what is the difference between happiness and pleasure we call happiness when there is no attachment there is attachment it is not happiness you can say pleasure this sensual pleasure or that sensual pleasure and you are attached to it and when you miss it you are a miserable person happiness even if it goes away you are still happy you don't care your mind is equanimous so it teaches you how to remain equanimous in every situation is tm as good as vipassana meditation every technique that i see gives good results we are not here to condemn other techniques i know tm very well maharshi is my very close friend he started his journey around the world to teach tm from my house we are so close friends but we know he knows about the person i know about tm a word is used and you keep on reciting that word it creates a new vibration artificial vibration and here we want you to observe the natural vibration whatever it is from time to time from moment to moment so any such thing where verbalization is used you have a wonderful cover which helps you from bad vibration coming to you but deep inside your impurity will remain stocked and they won't come out therefore we say just observe the reality as it is 
without having any artificial vibration being created. What is the earliest age of ch children to learn dharma? Before birth? <laughs> A pregnant mother learning vipassana, she is not learning for herself, she is also learning for the child. What wonderful vibration this child gets in the womb. Only love, compassion, goodwill, purity. And the, the life of this, this person will be so good. So many pregnant mothers come to courses because they have started understanding. They say, I want a Dhamma baby. I don't want Duryodhan. I want a Dhamma baby. I want a Dhamma baby. And they get Dhamma baby. Because the child gets such wonderful vibration. When in the womb, the mother generates craving, aversion, hatred, passion, lust. What message you are giving to the child? And what sort of child will come? So learn Vipassana before the child is born. What is the point of life if you do not have any passion? Practice. Practice and you, and you find without passion, passion, the life is so peaceful. Whatever you feel, a happiness or pleasure in your passionate life, you will find much more happiness, real happiness, lasting happiness, if you learn how to remain detached and enjoy the life. We are not against enjoying. Enjoy the life with detachment. Gajji, there are so many more questions, but these are the last four. These are the last four? Yep. And after that I am liberated? I think so. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. Why wasn't Buddha a vegetarian? Buddha will reply that. The whole country was non-vegetarian. We find at that time every tradition that was prevailing at that time was non-vegetarian. And he, he was giving people who to go out and serve in Dhamma. Better is no choice, whatever gets in the ball. But he started teaching the householders it will be very sinful if you kill some animal or bird and give that to a monk who comes to you. Or you order somebody else to kill and give you so that you, you offer non-vegetarian. Like that slowly changes came. And within the time of Ashoka, that is 200 after that, the whole country started becoming vegetarian. So because of the situation, he has to spread Dhamma for the good of so many people. So this... This uh, compromise was made, but a Vipassana meditator, a monk, good meditator, even if he eats non-vegetarian, he will touch the food and feel vibrations. Vibration in the, in the fingers, vibration in the food, and when it comes to the mouth, vibration in the lips, vibration in the gums, anicca, anicca, impermanent, impermanent, the tongue, the throat, as he swallows, anicca, anicca. So all bad vibration in the, the meat goes away. But still, non-vegetarian is good for meditation and that is why in every course there is not non-vegetarian food. Only vegetarian food is given. Are the gods real? Yes. You can become a god yourself. Take the devil out and you are a god. And here is a technique to drive away the devil. Drive it away and be a god. Then you will believe, yes, there are gods. Can a non-vegetarian find peace, happiness and harmony? Yes, can find. But then slowly you have to go to the depth where you will notice that the non-vegetarian food is not very helpful in my practice and you will come out of it. We don't say those who come to the courses, we give vegetarian food, but we don't say going back home, you must take only vegetarian. But slowly we find large number of people, they have left non-vegetarian, they are living with a vegetarian diet and are quite happy. How can I control anger when someone else cases me, curses me, someone causes it? Well, somebody else. This is the problem of that somebody else. Why you have that problem on your head? Somebody is shouting, somebody is showing negativity towards you, somebody is insulting you. A good meditator will see a miserable person. What he is doing? He is generating anger, hatred. 
and he's suffering with this unpleasant vibration, a miserable person, already he's burning. I don't feel like throwing some more petrol on this burning fire. I better throw some cold water. This person comes out of misery. And this is how you save yourself and save others. Learn Vipassana and all these questions will get answered. And you will get a wonderful path for your good and for the good of others. May all of you be happy, be peaceful, be liberated from all the miseries of the life.